Cheers to the last AEW Dynamite on Saturday for 2021! But what a show we had. Two matches in the World Title Eliminator. The first matchup for the TBS Women's Championship Tournament and a main event that got everyone a little confused but with Tommy N's explanation that he posted on Instagram a little bit earlier today, I guess you can really say that he did win the war. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling and we are starting... Obviously this video is posted very late. Um, Bound for Glory ended at 1 o'clock in the morning and both my roommates were sleeping and um, I was also really tired and I just got back from work. So here we go. We are reviewing AEW Dynamite first. <laughs> that opener. I really think it's impossible for Brian Danielson to have a bad match. I just honestly think that. So he wrestled Dustin Rhodes and this was the first time that these two have ever wrestled each other in my God, this match was a lot better than I expected. I really think that Dustin is so underrated in the ring, and I think it shows with just not only the students that he teaches at the Nightmare Factory, but just the matches that he's had in AEW since 2019. I mean, Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes from Double or Nothing 2019 is like still like my favorite AEW match ever. But damn, these two know how to work. Brian Jason picks up the wind as Dustin, like, he was in the guilt, he was in the guillotine, and then Dustin passed out. So what an amazing match. Brian obviously advances to wrestle, not Cassidy, um, Eddie Kingston. And we'll get to why that match was a little iffy. He's wrestling Eddie Kingston, I believe, next week on Dynamite, or that's the match on Rampage. I don't have the bracket right in front of me, so I don't remember. But I'm excited for Brian and Kingston. I really think that the match is going to be better than a lot of people expect because to me, I feel like Brian, like I said, Brian can't have a bad match with anybody, but I feel like Brian can like bring out the best in people. And I feel like it's going to be a different side of Eddie that we haven't seen because we're used to Eddie just being like the hard, rough, like brawler in the ring and like Brian's more of the technical side. So I think like we're going to see a new Eddie Kingston when this match happens. But let's talk about Archer and Kingston because Archer almost gave all of us a damn heart attack. Jesus. So the match is going on, and Lance Archer does a moonsault off the top rope, and he lands on his head. So I've seen this from different angles, so it looks like he landed on his forehead, which obviously, like, a lot of worse things can happen, so I'm happy that he's okay. I am assuming, given that he did tweet out that he is taking time off, that he does have a concussion, and speaking from someone who's had a concussion, it's literally the worst injury you could have, so feel better, Lance Archer. But Kingston picked up the win. I was a little shocked here because I figured that they would give Archer kind of the benefit of the doubt because Archer really isn't doing anything right now. So I feel like it would make more sense for him to advance in this tournament and not lose in the first round. But I also don't know if maybe they called an audible and maybe Kingston was supposed to lose here and Archer was supposed to advance against Brian. But obviously because he got hurt, they had to switch it up. I don't know. I know that busted my bracket because I picked that Archer was going to advance. But nonetheless, before the incident, the match was really good. I believe that these two have wrestled before in AEW. I just can't pinpoint one. But the match was fine, obviously, before. Like, they had to call the audible and then Kingston had to just do a roll-up. But, you know, you don't like seeing wrestlers get hurt, obviously. Um, and I do hope that Archer feels better and that he comes back bigger and stronger to actually do something. I also will, like, I know that we've seen, like, promos from Miro, but I am going to say, too, like, Miro not being in this tournament really shocked me. Just because I feel like Miro's not doing anything. I don't know. Like, I know Bill and I were just like, what do you mean Miro's not in this tournament? What? <laughs> but what we also did see was the TBS Women's Championship Tournament kickoff. Oh, my God. I was so excited. So the first round matchup was Penelope Ford and Ruby Soho and I will say because someone tweeted this and I found it really funny so Penelope Ford and Ruby Soho got 8 minutes and 28 seconds for their match that is around you could probably watch the majority of the Queen's Crown tournament in 8 minutes and 28 seconds this match was really good it was a tad sloppy at times but you know I'm not gonna blame anyone for it uh Allie of course came down there you know, to try to help Penelope. Ruby picks up the win, and then two-on-one beat down, and Red Velvet comes out because Red Velvet and Allie are wrestling at Dynamite on Wednesday. They really need to stop putting wrestlers, like, 
wrestlers I've worked with against each other because I don't know who to choose. I've worked with Red Velvet and and Allie. <laughs> But I also will say I'm really excited that Britt and Ty are wrestling each other at Full Gear. That's the match I've been campaigning for for the longest time and I'm so excited. I think Ty deserves it and I will say like although I did say I believe on the Rampage review like I was upset Conti's not in this tournament because I feel like it makes sense for Ty Conti to be the number one like it, she deserves to win this TBS championship. Um, I understand because she is wrestling with Britt at Full Gear and I do expect that match to be absolutely amazing. But let's talk about this main event. So it was Cody Rhodes and Malachi Black 3. Um, interesting to see that Arn was still with Cody. Obviously we saw what happened on Rampage. And so Andrade comes out. And then, so the one thing I kind of did hate was like Arn was in the ring for a while. Kind of waiting for Andrade to come. And like I'm not blaming Arn but I was like wow like he's really, really stalling for time here. Pop came out in defense of Cody and Cody Rhodes picks up the win. So I will say this, um, although to me it made more sense for Cody to win just because I physically couldn't see AEW making Malachi go 3-0 and if they're really holding off against the fact that they don't want to turn Cody heel I understand that too, but I think that AEW is going to come into trouble for what's next for Cody because you can't put Cody and Malachi against each other for a fourth match. And it kind of just screwed you in a way too because you saw how Edge and Rollins did the trilogy. Like, Edge won one match, Rollins won another, and then Edge won the final match. And that's the last time they're ever going to face each other for a very long period of time, if not, like, the last time they'll wrestle again. With having, like, trilogies, you have to have one, one, and then whoever. You can't have someone go two and out, and it's like, oh... Hmm. So I was really confused by that. But I will say, like, Tommy and... Oh, I keep calling him that because that's his Instagram name. Malachi Black posted on Instagram, I think right before I started recording this, about how Cody might have won. But to me, it's not always about pinning your opponent on the mat. I made the whole world hate you. And I made the fans turn on you. So in that case, does that mean I won the war? So... That's really interesting that that's how they're kind of turning it, like, Malachi is very much blaming himself for the heel turn, which I find very interesting and very exciting, but I do worry also, like, what's next for Malachi too, because, I don't know, like, w what do I see Malachi doing at full gear? Meaning that he was not even on, uh, all out. He was on the guard. I mean, neither was Cody, but, you know, things I worry about. Overall, I thought Dynamite was pretty good. Obviously, like, I do give Dynamite the benefit of the doubt because a lot of the stars were on the cruise. So, it was, you know, it was kind of weird, like, just seeing Brandon Cutler, like, without the Elite, then the Elite all coming out. So, I will give them the benefit of the doubt that a lot of their stars were on this cruise and a lot of their stars could not come to Dynamite. But it was not the best episode, but it's not the worst. And that's it for me. And if you're following along in order, the next video will be reviewing A Bound for Glory. And that really, really weird ending. <laughs> but that's it for me.